Welcome back to Croke Park, where the sun is shining and where there is, as usual, a fair degree of breeze around. The wind, or the uh, toss was won by Wicklow, and they have opted to play from left to right in the first half. So a dear high pressure for both of these teams at a time when a lot of money is going into the preparing of teams right across the country in the inter-county game. There surely is pressure on Wicklow here and on Kildare to produce a winning result from this first round Leinster Championship match. If Kildare lose, the qualifiers offer scant comfort for them because they've done very badly in the past through the qualifiers. If Wicklow lose, of course, they're out of the championship. And that's Keith Cribben who will come into the forward line. He replaces Podrigo O'Neill, who was originally selected, but then they opted not to uh, start him today. He played very little football over the last 12 months. Cribben is an under-21 player, didn't figure in the under-21 championship victory, or in the uh, victory in Leinster, that is, but, of course, they lost the ultimate All-Ireland final to Kerry in Furness a few weeks ago. But he's in today, and he's got into top of the left. The referee is John Bannon from Longford and you were mentioning at the top of the program Michael the fact that uh, we have Kildare and Galway in action 10 years after the All-Ireland final meeting and of course John Bannon was the referee back in 1998 earlier switched with Johnny Doyle and Johnny Doyle has switched around with Daryl Flynn all switches match underway and it's straight away Wicklow who get this ball downfield into a good attacking position here with Leighton Glynn. Trying to turn it back inside here, intended for Shawnee Furlong, picked up instead by Killian Brennan. Well, there was a direct indication given to us that Wickler were going to play from left to right. In fact, they're playing from, as you can see, right to left. Here's Johnny Doyle, passed a fitness test. There was a concern about him. He had a hip injury sustained in a challenge match against Cork recently. Out over the sideline, that's going to be our Wicklow line ball. Kieran Highland anxious to take it quickly. Kieran, the 26-year-old from Arklow, won a Hogan Cup Colleges medal in 1999 when uh, good counsel from New Ross beat St. Charles of Chewham. Here's Leighton Glynn. Start here with the Tommy Murphy Cup was won against Antrim back in August of last year. Johnny Doyle again. Alan Smith moving across swiftly to try and take this, struggling, however, to get it under control. Line ball once again to Wicklow. Lots of switches, Martin. Yeah, lots of switches. Dermot Early is playing right half forward at the moment, and I think out into the middle of the field, uh, Daryl Flynn has taken up a position there. But so far, both teams are playing in a very direct manner, contrary to what, contrary to what we expected. Dalton setting it up here. Paul Earls trying to keep it under control. This is Tony Hannon. Good block down. Really good work that time by Gary White. Killian Brennan, the Kildare captain, getting it away to Johnny Doyle. Challenged here by Dara Ohanik. And the wind is sweeping around Croke Park. Very difficult to get a direct handle on it and say who it's favouring. If anything, it probably is supporting uh, Wicklow in the first half. Alan Byrne in the corner, needing support. Mick McLaughlin going back to help him out. Into the centre, taken back. This is Knights. Good work here. This is James Stafford. Programmed to wear number nine, but he's number eight, as you can see. And the referee blows his whistle, and that's a free into Wicklow. Just inside the 45-metre line, Emmett Bolton from Eadstown, the player indicted. I was wondering what numbers, in fact, the two midfielders from Wickler were going to play because traditionally Stafford wears eight and Thomas Walsh wears nine. And clearly they are their lucky numbers. They've gone back, for luck's sake, to the uh, numbers they trust most. Tony Hannon kicking this one and putting it over the bar. Good opening score then by the uh, bank manager, experienced player from Hollywood. Tony Hannon giving Wicklow the lead. Well, he once scored three points in a championship victory for Wicklow. There haven't been too many of those. It was in the qualifiers in 2001, and Longford were beaten down in Ockram. Yeah, a remarkable statistic, actually. The to uh, that column came up earlier that they have never won a championship game here in Crow Park. Again, that has set them up. Uh, you know, that set them up nicely there. Good kick. I think that's what uh, Mikko most wants to enjoy, a victory here 
and to see his team advance. Ronan Sweeney, one of four Moorfield players starting out for Kildare this afternoon. Dermot Early setting it up here in the centre. Hit high and hopeful and down over the uh, end line. Wasted opportunity. Nothing whatsoever that uh, Alan Smith was able to do about that. Alan Smith, who is still a student. Well, what a career this man has had. Today it's his 116th championship match in charge of a team playing in the major competition. Kieran McGinney, who played 57 times for Armagh. Two managers at opposite ends of the spectrum, as it were. Leighton Glynn feeding it through to Shawnee Furlong, the Hurlicum footballer taking on Kevin O'Neill. O'Neill trying to get the ball, and the referee allows play to develop, and it's picked up here by Anthony Rainbow. Rainbow, who's 37 years of age, his 17th championship season with Kildare. Remarkable record. Referee is going to hold that up while uh, Gary White has won the free, and the notebook is shown there to Tony Hannon. So he gets a little caution. Quickly taken to Ronan Sweeney. And Kildare bringing players back in and around the middle of the park, leaving a big gap then between the two target men up front. And they are Alan Smith and Keith Cribben. Back with Daryl Flynn once again. Played in a Leinster under-21 final here three years ago, I remember, against the Dubs. Darrow Kine Darrow Hanick. Damien Power, full back, roaming out from his number three role. The hefty challenge there by Killian Brennan has uh, got to incur the wrath of the match official for that. And the name going into the notebook. This is what the referee saw. And the reaction from the referee is going to be to brandish a yellow card. Well, I think in fairness to Killian Brennan that time, it was more awkward than malicious. He was trying to attack the ball. He certainly caught Darrow Ohani across the face. And, as, you know, he's got a yellow card very early on, which can be a disadvantage, actually. Major disadvantage. Has to be very, very disciplined. Yeah, we often speak about this. It's not the second yellow card is the problem. It's the early one, the cheap yeah. one that you actually earn early on in a game that causes the problem. Now, bear in mind, of course, the referee has the... Uh possibility of giving a black after a yellow that's important Gary White with a very good block there but it comes back to Tony Hannon he's got the only point of the match so far from a free neat turn here by Dean Odlum nicely in here towards Paul Earls and Paul Earls kicks it but he's misjudged it couldn't quite guide it over the crossbar Scorer of a goal and six the last time these two counties met in the championship, which was here in 2005. You yeah, have been quite impressed actually with the movement of Dean Odlam, Shawnee Forlong, and Paul Earls over the first five or six minutes. They're kind of working very well together, making a lot of space, even though in one of the clashes so far, Kevin O'Neill has come out decisively in, uh, on top. Well, I was mentioning earlier that Kildare had just two men in their inside forward line. They've now got a third because uh, Mikey Conway's got in to join them. Stafford getting that ball forward, but it's uh, seized on here and taken away well. Morgan O'Flaherty, huge one in, collected well here by Alan Byrne, out as far as Thomas Walsh. Former Carlo player, his brother indeed, will be playing for Carlo in the match immediately after this against Meath, a game that's being streamed on uh, rte.ie. That's a shoulder there by James Stafford. Johnny Doyle, the player who was fouled. Free to Kildare. Take it quickly. Up into the air it goes. Taken down with a lot of difficulty. Good play by the corner forward, Alan Smith. So we're free into Kildare. And an opportunity to uh, draw the match after eight minutes of play. Yeah, that was an awkward enough challenge by Damian Power that time. Again, OK, maybe going for a 50-50 ball, but he did concede the free. So it's going to be Johnny Doyle who will come up to take this. Playing today in his 32nd championship match. You know, even in a bad year like last year for Kildare, and it was a poor championship year, he still managed to get two goals and 16 points in just the three matches they played. So he's got quite a record. 
trying to curl it in between the posts and he's done it precisely that good work by Johnny Doyle teams level both points opening scores in this match coming from freeze yeah, I think maybe it's one of the reasons why Kildare haven't thrived in the last number of years and that they haven't got a, a suitable foil for John Doyle. Again, if he had one or two people to support him in the forward line, they would have been much more dangerous and much more successful, I think. Well, the emphasis, Martin, is very definitely on the under-21s and the uh, emerging players coming through. It's as if Kieran McGinney has said, well, the uh, old guard had their chance. But certainly this young lad, Alan Smith, a corner forward, was outstanding for the under-21s right through. Mervyn Travers kicking it and he's got a fair old kick out added to there by JP Dalton. One back again here by Gary White, needing a little bit of support. Inevitably, it's Anthony Rainbows there to help out. Doyle now up against Darrow Hannick, fed in. Back towards Doyle again it comes. Goes this way and that. In the end, leaves it behind to Mick McLaughlin. The wing back getting it forward to JP Dalton for Wicklow. Point to piece in the opening stages. Leighton Glynn looking for the first score to come from play. Glynn with the outside of the boot inside here. As far as Paul Earls. Earls with a quick look up and a good looking shot and it's over the bar. Good score. Finally a point comes from play but it's in the tenth minute. And Wicklow reassert themselves again and go back into the lead. This was good work, neat football here. Paul Earls, the young teacher, getting it onto his right, measuring the breeze really well, and inside that post, 2-1. Yeah, a lovely bit of combined football by Wicklow that time. Again, the quality of the ball out from the outside of the foot fo uh, found Paul Earls, who had moved very well, and he finishes it expertly. That's dropped down there by Dermot Early. Fortunately, Anthony Rainbow's coming onto it. Might put it over the bar himself here. Oh, a little wayward with the final kick. He'd love to have seen that go over. It's his 49th championship match. In the past, he's got 24 points. Not half bad for a guy who's played most of the time back around the back line. Yeah, that time, actually, John Doyle looped around beautifully to take the ball of Anthony Rainbow. But as you say, he's 17 years playing, fancies his chances. And it, but again, should have learned, I think. He's so fit. He's remarkably fit. Marvin Travers. Played in the Tommy Murphy Cup final last year, but it's actually his first championship match for Wicklow. And he's one of the nine debutants we're seeing in action between these two teams. Darrow Hannick. It comes to Paddy Dalton. Back once again towards Stafford. Fed ahead to JP Dalton. Letting it fly. Wind catching it. Dean Odlum unable to take it under control. Line ball to Kildare. Both sides playing very, very conservatively so far. At the settling down stage. So much at stake. Nobody wants to lose this first round game. Daryl Flynn. Nicely ahead here. This is Emmett Bolton. Got a goal and a point last year against me at this stage. Falls nicely here for Damien Parr, the Rath New player. Back out as far as Stafford. Lets it behind to Killian Brennan. Challenges unfairly free kick which Dermot Early is ready to take up towards Keith Cribben Damien Parr now judging it well nicely across here as far as Thomas Walsh again kicked into space so much of the play is in between the 245 metre lines and then it's a case of the two inside forward lines hoping to have the pace and the necessary guile to get possession and sc ultimate scores Mick McLaughlin judging it really well. This is Alan Byrne breaking from corner back. Back towards JP Dalton again. Jacko, they call him. Leighton Glynn now. Trying to get around Daryl Flynn. Two number 11s in battle here on a bright sunny day here in Croke Park. Opening day of the double bill on the Sunday game. That, unfortunately, from Leighton Gill, Glynn's point of view, not on target. Yeah, that time Daryl Flynn actually exerted a lot of pressure on Leighton Glynn, again forced the wide. But it must be said, both sets of full forward lines are very orthodox at the moment. They're playing three up front on both sides, but there is a lot of congestion around the middle of the field and really an absence of half-back lines on both teams. The game is changing the whole time. 
It's evolving and coaching is playing such a huge role in it nowadays. Trying to retain possession as best they can, then trying to use it as best they're able. This time it breaks down again and JP Dalton gets in there, helped by James Stafford, another one of the Rath new players. Here's Paul Earls, player of good skill, nice pace as well, good imagination. Back into Walsh, back out to Earls, it comes again. Looking for Dean Odlum. Again, just losing his footing, sticking out the leg, tripping. Killian Brennan, referee might have a word with him, in fact, he's got to do so. That's Dean Odlum, when he lost it, he decided, whoops, had a little kick out that time. And in the end, the referee took some action. I told a notebook was uh, flashed in the direction of Dean Odlum. I didn't see a yellow card. Anyway, he's OK. Yeah, it must be said, actually, that the two, uh, both Kevin O'Neill and Emmett Bolton in the Kildare full back line are having very good contests at the moment with Furlong and with Earls, and they're probably shading it somewhat. Is Thomas Walsh again. And that time it's uh, Dermot Early who is guilty of dragging back. Notebook shown. In the sunlight, the notebook can look like a yellow card on occasions because it's so bright. But I think it's just a notebook shown to Dermot Early that time. So he's been noted for his troubles. JP Dalton. Really solid, hard-working player has played everywhere between half back and half forward for Wicklow. How he'd love to be on a, a Wicklow team that wins a Leinster Championship match. They haven't won a game in the Leinster Championship since 2000. Well, it is a yellow card for Dean Odlum. So that's a yellow card per team. Killian Brennan and now Dean Odlum. And there's a change as well in the Wicklow team as that ball is carried forward by JP Dalton. Kieran Walsh has just come in in the last couple of minutes, number 19. Didn't see who he uh, replaced. In fact, it's JP Dalton, it appears. It's a blood substitution. So just a temporary measure. Here he is. Played a lot during the league. In towards Dean Odlum, breaks out here again towards Stafford, and Stafford kicks it, but he puts it to the left. Bad miss by James Stafford. He was in a really good position that time. If they're going to win this game, that's the kind of ball he needs to put over the bar, and Mick O'Dwyer is very, very well aware of that. Yeah, that was a real gimme. Like, Kieran Watch got a good ball out in the corner. He's just on as a blood sub. Again, a good cross-field ball. But that time, he'll be uh, uh, Stafford will be very disappointed with the finish. Not much the managers can do when players miss from key areas like that. Stafford jumping, Stafford catching. Leighton Glynn at the receiving end. Quick look around. Into the corner there, it's Emmett Bolton. Challenged by Dean Odlum. Oof, the difficult ball he was trying to give to Gary White that time, didn't really give White much of a chance. Hannon was in swiftly, releasing himself from the would-be tackle, Tony Hannon showing good control. One hop and a quick release back out here. This is the uh, new man in, Kieran Walsh. Little block on it, came to Rainbow, worked out as far as Killian Brennan. And Killian Brennan with a chance to get that ball out of defence, out to John Doyle. It's been too much pressure on the... Kildare backs in the opening 17 minutes of this match, I'm sure, for the manager's liking. Yeah, and I think one of the things that's contributing to that is that Dermot Early is continuing to play, actually, at wing forward. I feel myself, if he was in midfield, in a much more orthodox and suited position to him, Kildare will be getting much more ball forward. Well, JP Dalton's back into the match again, so Kieran Walsh can have a little breather. At least he has been introduced to the fray if he comes in as a legitimate sub later on in the game. Here's Ronan Sweeney, big one in this time, breaks down, Alan Smith getting it under control, kicking, but kicking it inaccurately, and a wasted opportunity. They haven't had as many chances as Wicklow have had in terms of opportunities and indeed possession, needed to make that, they're still trailing. 
Well, Kieran McGinney, known to everybody in the game as Geezer, first time to be in charge of a team in the Championship. Big, big step up from being a great player. Yeah, one of the things you notice actually, he's applying the Armagh template to the way Kildare are playing in the forward line, just leaving two men in, trying to get quick ball into them and hoping that they can pick up the scraps and score from them. The important part there is quick ball. They really do need quick ball. This time Mick McLaughlin from Blessington ready to take the sideline ball. Kicking it in as far as Jacko Dalton. This is Paddy Dalton, part of the clan, not related. Darrow Hannig, JP again. Oh, they're fumbling with this one, need to get it under control. Mick McLaughlin. Whatever little breeze is behind them in the opening 35 minutes, they need to make the most of it. Here's Shawnee Furlong. Fouled by Kevin O'Neill. And the big Moorfield full-back is uh, noted by the referee for that. Yeah, the little shimmy that time by Shawnee Furlong got him around uh, Kevin O'Neill. There was no malice in that, but certainly he conceded a free. But they're, both of them are having a good tussle, and I've been quite impressed with O'Neill in the opening exchanges. He's quite quick out to the ball, a little bit more disciplined in the tackle that time, and I think he would have been able to shepherd Furlong out to the side. Tony Hannon kicked the opening point of the match from a free. Here he is again, just inside the 45-metre line. Let's it up into the air, but uh, again, it's outside the right-hand post. And he looks very, very disconsolate. Well, the man who's looking disconsolate right now is Emmett Bolton from Eatstown. Might require a little bit of attention. If he does, I think the referee has told him to have that attention off the field. So just for the moment, Kildare down to 14. Yeah, I noticed McGinney having a word a moment ago with Dermot Early. I'm not sure if he wants him to go out more around the middle of the field because quite up to now he's been somewhat effective. He's a, such a good player if he's in the middle of the park. The Kildare side relegated from Division 1. Well, they won just one match. That was against Donegal and that's where Killian Brennan's show was blocked down by Stafford. And there's a chance here for Leighton Glynn to show what pace he has. Good incisive run forward, hitting it at the precise moment and clipping it over the bar. Good score by Leighton Glynn. And Wicklow push into a two-point lead. Three points to one, their fans are happy. Really good work by Leighton Glenn. When he got a goal at four points against Antrim here last August, he's a really good top-class forward. Showed great pace, nobody near him. Unable to get a block in, did really well. Good shot. Yeah, again, Killian Brennan was somewhat ponderous on the ball that time. Got it blocked. Again, despite trying to get back in Glynn, Glynn showed a lot of pace, a lot of confidence and shot a good point. But Wicklow actually are just shading it at the moment. Kildare have a lot of work to do. Only one point for Kildare so far. That was uh, from a free by Johnny Doyle. They have possession again here. This time it's Andrew McLaughlin from Ellistown. Referee might have brought the ball forward an extra 13 metres there, but decides no, the free will be taken from the original spot. Rainbow kicking it. This time Ronan Sweeney goes to ground. A lot of little niggly fouls being committed. Real lack of flow in the action. Dermot Early kicking it. Judging it well, nicely in there. Smith taking it down, looking around, having a go and putting it over the bar. Nice score, very good young player. First of the day for him. Yeah, that's a well-taken score, actually, that time. Again, not a particularly big lad, but fielded that ball well and, again, shot a good point. And, again, you know, the, 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 that young lad, young Smith, needs to come into the game more, but to do that, he must get a greater supply from the middle of the park. And at the moment, both, I think, Thomas Walsh and James Stafford are shading it out there. And maybe, again, I may be repeating myself, but I believe myself, Dermot Early should go into a much more orthodox midfield position. Dermot Early, of course, and Smith are club mates at Sarsfields along indeed with uh, Gary White. Here's Paddy Dalton. Wicklow looking for another response now. Paul Earls knocking it in there. It was intended for Leighton, Glynn had moved inside. Picked up by Dean Odlam instead. Released there for Shawnee Furlong, and Furlong puts it over the bar. Good play by the Kiltegan player. Really, really good work by Furlong. Did well in Division 4 this year for uh, Wicklow. Scored a goal in 22 for them. That ball was played in beautifully, 
drop down here neatly for Odlum onto his full forward and Shawnee Furlong did the rest. Yeah, Andrew McLaughlin's handling let him down that time, but again, Furlong's finish again was incisive. Again, good football, much more direct football from Wicklow. 4-2. Fisted down, and again it's picked up by Wicklow. James Stafford from that knockdown by Paddy Dalton. Dara Ohanig now, on to Jack O'Dalton. Wrong-footing Anthony Rainbow, inside neatly here for Shawnee Furlong. Furlong regaining his control. Earls are required. Support arriving. Comes in the figure of Tony Hannon. And the final effort, however, lets them down because it was a promising build-up up to that point. That's the fifth wide of the match so far for Wicklow. And they have an injury to one of their players, maybe Shawnee Furlong. Yeah, I think Shawnee Furlong actually has hurt himself in that exchange. Again, if he was a little bit more direct that time, I think their score was on. Well, there's going to be a change now, as you can see, for Kildare. And coming into the action is Eamon Callaghan. And Emmett Bolton, who went out with an injury a little while ago. So in comes uh, Eamon Callaghan for his 14th championship match. And straight into left corner back. Lots and lots of talent in uh, Kildare. They've got to produce it, however. That's a lovely catch there produced by Dermot Early. Uh, the referee saw him foul the ball after that. Free to Wicklow. Dermot looking for an explanation. I think he threw it up and caught it again. Leighton Glynn ready to take this free. Again, it's a beautiful ball in here because the defence went one way, Shawnee Furlong went the other, got possession, free from 13 metres, going nicely for Wicklow. Yeah, it's going nicely, and I think a lot of those free kicks have been worked on in training. Again, to suck out a lot of the half-backs, to leave the space inside to hit Shawnee Furlong with. And just for the last, on the last couple of occasions, he's got the better of Kevin O'Neill, drew the foul that time, and again, an easy enough opportunity for Wicklow. And an easy enough decision for the referee to give a yellow card to Kevin O'Neill. Shawnee Furlong's a very good target man, doing well. He's doing well, and again, Kevin O'Neill had been doing quite well up until the last couple of minutes, but again, with the yellow card against him, now he's under pressure. As Tony Allen has the simple enough task of tapping it over the bar and making it Wicklow 5, Kildare 2. Well, you'd never think there were three divisions like between those two teams, like that Kildare have been a first division team all winter and that, and that Wicklow have been a fourth division team. Wicklow are the more confident team, playing the better football, finding their men easier, and Kildare need to start getting a little bit of spark into proceedings fairly quickly. So a match with just seven points so far after 26 minutes of play, four of them coming from play. Dermot Early jumping with Stafford, Stafford touched it down but only to the waiting Gary White and he's the left half back of Kildare, fisted on that time by Mikey Conway into the corner, a bit of work down there for Alan Byrne to do, out over the end line, nursed it beautifully, that's going to be a kick out to Wicklow. Alan Smith there just exchanging pleasantries with Damien Power, came in to offer his top and safety worth. Alan Byrne has the task of picking up Alan Smith, and it's a, it's a big ask this afternoon. But Byrne's an experienced campaigner. Marvin Travers. White breaking it, but breaking it down to his man, Tony Hannon. Hannon was then fouled. Pretty quickly taken by Mick McLaughlin. Nicely in there to Dean Odlam. He's a good distance out from goal. Very mobile corner forward. New marker on. This time it's picked up well. Eamon Callaghan getting it away. Up to the forwards. Chance to build something there. Here's Mikey Conway. Wide across towards Keith Gribben. And good defence, strong defence by Kiro and Highland from Arklo. Yeah, I've been hugely impressed with the two cornerbacks, Kieran Highland and Alan Byrne. They certainly have the shackles on Conway and Smith up to now. As Cribben comes in, hits it beautifully, right between the posts. Lovely score for Kildare. A first in the championship for Keith Cribben. Well, on his debut, he makes it five points to three. Came on to it confidently, struck it beautifully. Excellent score. So after 28 minutes of play, just two points the margin in what is a relatively low-scoring game. 
I know there's one significant change at the moment. John Doyle has now been positioned in at full forward. I think it's a change that was necessary to get a little bit more impetus into the Caldera attack. Well, he's a known and noted scorer. Good place to be as Killian Brennan, the captain, breaks it down. Picked up again by Wickler, who are getting a lot of the breaks. Good scrappage work on their part. Darrell Hannig in towards Shawnee Furlow. The defence dealing with it on this occasion. Morgan O'Flaherty getting it out into the centre to Dermot Early. Worked away, worked neatly through the centre. Kicked forward there by Darrell Flynn towards Cribben. Again, it's Darrell Hannig, the centre half back for Wickler, who has it. Now, this is Thomas Walsh. Back towards his midfield ally, James Stafford. Into space, but it's a very, very poor final ball delivered by Stafford. Needs to do a lot, lot better than that. Yeah, in all fairness, I think it's the first real aimless ball I've seen from the Wicklow midfield pairing into the forward line. But again, just at that particular moment, the Wicklow full forward line had lost its shape. Too many men were out the field and, they, and the chance was lost. Well, there's... Uh... Kieran McGinney along with uh, Paul Grimley, of course, and Niall Carew. Backroom team looking after Kildare football. Gary White. Rainbow. In as far as Brennan. Giving it back towards the wing half. This time Johnny Doyle coming away from full forward. Has a bit of support there from Daryl Flynn, didn't use him. Worked it in beautifully, however, towards Ronan Sweeney, back towards Mikey Conway, and Conway's shot is stopped on the line by Mervyn Travers. Back out to Alan Byrne. That was a useful effort for Kildare. They should have been able to take the score that time, just failing to make the distance, however. JP Dalton. Short, somewhat dangerous. They get away with it, Wicklow. Retained possession and Darrow Hannig then going long to Dean Odlum. Over there challenged by Eamon Callaghan. Callaghan still trying to pressurise. Odlum's a, a tricky character. And in the end he does very well to win a free kick for his team. Callaghan looked to have come to terms with that particular threat. Free kick as far as JP Dalton. Inside beautifully towards Thomas Walsh. Two men against him, needing a simple outlet pass, and that time he released the ball from one hand to the other, held on too long. Free kick quickly taken by Kildare. In the final four minutes of the first half, Mikey Conway way, way back. Nicely forward this time for Ronan Sweeney. Moorfield player, moving forward with some purpose. Looking for a player coming forward in support. It's Conway who started the attack. Now can he finish? The answer is yes. Mikey Conway from Nerny, first point of the day, and it's five points to four. Good work by Conway, because he started and he finished that move, which involved Ronan Sweeney. Yeah, fine score that time, actually. Again, Ronan Sweeney's pass was just very precise, and again, Conway finished it very well. But again, I must say, I think since uh, John Doyle has gone to full forward, things have improved somewhat. Again, just watch, uh, I think that time it was Ronan Sweeney with the crossfield ball. Conway had drifted nicely into space and again shot a good score. But again, just coming up to half time, they can do without an injury to Killian Brennan. But Wicklow have been the better team throughout the first half. Well, Killian has obviously got uh, blood on his hand there, so the team doctor, Danny Mulvihill, and the physio, Noel Mallon, having to deal with that off the field. So there's going to be uh, a blood substitute introduced at this point, and that is Porik Malarkey. Malarkey from Round Towers, who has plenty of championship experience himself. Played everywhere also in the team, from cornerback to full forward. Travers with the kick out. Winds swirling around the ground. Tony Hannon takes it down for Wicklow. Leading by just a point. But they've done well in this first half. Thomas Walsh in towards a two-man inside line that have the capacity to cause problems. This time the clearance out of defence coming out here as far as the substitute. Malarkey. Scoring chances so far, they've taken 50% as you can see. And we are two minutes to go to half-time. Kildare have themselves a free kick. Dermot Early ready to take it. Huge one in, intended for his colleague at club level. Reached him Smith, 
back in here and Malarkey was ready to pull the trigger there didn't get a free kick thought he might and it's worked out as far as JP Dalton they hold it short they look confident and assured Wicklow even though at times you feel they're playing somewhat dangerously in and around their own defence out it comes here as far as Shawnee Furlong doing well against Kevin O'Neill causing problems for the number three back again he has it look at the number of Kildare players around him still they retain the possession Paddy Dalton look around to see who's making a move a diagonal run outside there by Dean Odlum and in the end the referee rather than allow an advantage as Vic McLaughlin had possession decides to show the notebook to Anthony Rainbow and award a free kick to Wicklow yeah, that was a beautiful pass that time from, uh, I think it was Paddy Dalton over to Dean Odlum. And again, who's showing very well in the inside line. Just watch the quality, won very well. Rainbow slightly, I think, uh, you know, in discipline in his tackling and an easy enough free in. Although I think it was... Um, it was, in fact, Eamon, Eamon Callaghan. Callaghan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Tony Hannan with two points from two frees so far. That's two out of three taken. And this one needed to be on target to give them a little bit of a cushion before the break. And he's missed it. And there are going to be two minutes now of additional time. So he was looking out for the signal there. Mick O'Dwyer getting ready for his half-time team talk. On a thirsty day, a man who has seen it all and done it all. Thomas Corley has taken over in goal from uh, Ender Murphy, who's just back from his honeymoon, incidentally. And as a sub this afternoon. Kildare fortunate to have two very, very good goalkeepers. That kick out won by James Stafford. Back it comes again towards Thomas Walsh, looking to give them some breathing space before the break. They just lead by a point. 5-4. Might be further ahead. Malarkey getting it away for Kildare into the centre. Held on to here by Darrell Flynn, ruggedly taking it. Back out it comes again. Worked away as far as Gary White. A lot of room now in which to manoeuvre. 40 metres out from the Wicklow goal, high up into the sky. That wasn't what he intended. Wind might have been a factor. Comes back once again to Tony Hannon, who is tackled unfairly. Just an interesting little stat, actually, and Wicklow have had seven kickouts up to now. They've won six of them and just lost one. And again with uh, with Kildare, they've only won six of their own. And again, Kildare of uh, our uh, uh, sorry, Kildare have won six of their own and lost four. As Malarkey kicks it back in, and um, Kildare try to draw level before the break. Johnny Doyle back here as far as Ronan Sweeney under pressure, kicking well. That's a beauty. Nice work by Ronan Sweeney, tying up the match. Five points apiece in the second minute of stoppage time in this uh, first round Leinster Championship game at Grove Park the little feedback as far as the Moorfield player and Ronan Sweeney did the rest 5 all. Yeah, I think if Doyle gets the ball in there, he has the ability and he has the capacity to cause a lot of trouble for Damien Power but again, they must start getting more ball around the middle of the field to be able to exploit his quality Referee looking at his watch Blowing his whistle, that's half time. And as in the past, Wicklow have threatened great things against Kildare without being able to finish off the task. It looks something similar here this afternoon. They have led for much of the half, but paid back right at the finish there with that Ronan Sweeney point. At the break, it's Kildare 5, Wicklow 5. More action shortly from Croke Park. And we're just waiting for John Bannon to uh, get the ball underway and thrown in once uh, everybody and everybody has made their way off the uh, fitness levels that uh, Joe and Colum were wondering about of these Wicklow teams well you know they've trained in Ockram and they've run the sands at British Bay as well and Mikko had the squad down to his native Waterville to play and indeed to beat South Kerry recently so they're in good fettle whether they have been demoralized by those late scores by Kildare before the break only time will tell second half underway and it's uh, now Kildare who will play from Right to left, James Stafford straight away getting primary possession here. The little link up with Tony Hannan. 
Thomas Walsh belting it in there in towards Paul Earls who's been marked by Morgan O'Flaherty and Morgan O'Flaherty is leaving his mark on him because the referee said he went in too aggressively and it's a free to Wicklow and a chance for them to take the lead once again. Well, this is an opportunity to to put the uh, I think for Tony Hanaho or Tony Hannon I should say to put the yips behind him. A couple of opportunities he had in the first half that he missed. He'd be anxious to make amends for those. Well, so far he's got two from four frees taken. This to make it six five. Thirty meters out should be routine, and indeed it is. First of the second half then, and three points for Tony Hannon. 6-5, Wickler lead again. Long, long way to go. Good enthusiastic support here. They're anticipating a crowd today at Croke Park for the two matches of round about 20, 25,000. Thomas Corley, part of an excellent under-21 team led by their team manager Glenn Ryan that reached the All-Ireland final, one Leinster. One back again here by Wicklow in the centre of the park. Kicked forward by Thomas Walsh, giving the ammunition in as far as Shawnee Furlong. Breaks free, chance of a goal here. Fisted in off the post by Dean Oglum. Oh dear, there was a goal there for the taking. It's a free in instead, but there was a goal for the taking. And you wondered whether or not that was a pass given when there should have been a shot taken as Shawnee Furlong was breezing in on goal. No, I think he did the right thing. Shawnee Furlong came in, he saw Dean Oglebert on the side of his eyes. He did the right thing, but Oglum's uh, uh, effort, unfortunately, from a Wicklow point of view, hit the post. And Oglum has put this over the bar, so it's one instead of three points from that attack. And a second point of the match for Shawnee Furlong. Let's just have a look at this again now, because this was as good a chance as Wicklow are going to get of getting a goal in this match. Had a chance to kick it here, passed instead, and Dean Odlam had the misfortune to see it come back off the post. It was an excellent opportunity and a lead off for Kildare. Yeah, and again, I think subsequently then Kevin O'Neill touched the ball on the ground. Fisted back there by Mick McLaughlin. Again, it is picked up here by Wicklow and Leighton Glynn, who was leading the attack splendidly this afternoon. Really good work against Andrew McLaughlin. Inside to try and take a return ball. Comes back instead, however, to Mikey Conway, the roaming corner forward. Well, he's wearing the number 13 for Kildare, but doesn't play there. Furlong plays at full forward, that's where he is. In towards Paul Earls. Little block down, that's wonderful work by Killian Brennan. But it comes back out again to James Stafford. All Wicklow in the opening minutes of the second top and that went over defender that's gone for a 45 the game's first yeah Kieran McGinn will be very disappointed in the way Kildare started the second half they're not showing the same hunger for winning the, the dirty ball the ugly ball as Wicklow are Wicklow are winning every 50-50 and 40-60 uh, exchange and that's a worry from a Kildare point of view that was some block by Killian Brennan from Suncroft there excellent work Well, it's typical Mick O'Dwyer type of team. He's done it in the past with Kildare, won two Leinsters with them, took to an All-Ireland final as well. He's given them great spirit and determination and a sense that they can do it. Tony Hannon kicking, he's done it! Over the bar from the 45. Four points for Hannon, eight for Wicklow, five for Kildare, who are still back in the starting blocks and we've got into the second half and we're into the 40th minute. Yeah, and if you gauge the kickouts actually the, from the Kildare side of the field since the start of the second half, it appears the Kildare actually are playing against the wind in this half. It's difficult to gauge from up here. Well, the wind blows everywhere and anywhere as we know at Croke Park. Depends where you're standing or walking at a particular time. Once again, it is taken by Dermot Early in the centre of the park. He needs to start winning a lot of ball now. Challenges coming in here. Stafford with one of the challenges. Referee didn't like the nature of that. Nor did the fans. Free quickly taken. Comes back out to Wicklow. They're winning all of these 50-50 balls at this stage. Paddy Dalton back once again here. Highland was involved. Comes out to JP Dalton. Played loose this time in towards Leighton Glynn. Back towards Dalton once again. Clever use of possession. Tony Hannon now coming forward. Hannon on his left. Kicking under pressure. Crowd like it behind the goal. 
Umpires do as well. Another white flag. Another for Tony Hannan. His fifth. Whatever they were talking about at half time and saying Tony Hannan's confidence was low. Second half has certainly confounded that because in five minutes he's tagged on three points and Wicklow lead by four. Well, there's only one team figure to be speaking that has come out of the dressing room since half time, and that's Wicklow. They're playing all the football, they're playing with a mad enthusiasm, something that you would expect from a Mick O'Dwyer team. But I'm amazed at the lack of response from Kildare. And Gary White is going to get himself a yellow card. It's not going right for them, but I can recall the 2005 meeting of the same teams. At this stage of the game, Wicklow led by six. They ended up losing by two. It's a long way to go. That's fisted by Mick McLaughlin, the wing back for Wicklow, but picked up by Andrew McLaughlin, his namesake. And Andrew knew immediately as he looked up to the skies that that was not well directed. Their players certainly very disjointed at the moment. They're finding it very difficult to get down the ball, and there's no movement whatsoever up front. Right now it's suiting Wicklow, they're putting in the pressure, putting in the challenges, they're in their face. Referee said that time too much so. Free kick to Kildare in their own half of the field. Dermot early ready to take it. Very cool afternoon, if there, even if there is uh, plenty of sunlight overhead. Attention required for Gary White. And the uh, physio in there attending to him is Eamon Amurkutik. Doc having a look as well, just making sure that the second lieutenant is OK. A young Irish army officer, this is what happened to him. He came down onto his arm, feeling the uh, pain of that, just making sure that he's able to continue. No point in taking a chance, even if he is wonderfully talented with a player who is way below full fitness. Dermot Early taking this free. And once again, picked up by a Wicklow player, J.P. Dalton. Left behind for a moment. And Kildare very happily take it back through Anthony Rainbow. Johnny Doyle now has come out to the right half forward position, taking on the fullback Damien Power. Back in once again, Rainbow there, trying to dish it off, does so successfully. As far as Alan Smith, got a great point in the first half. Back here to the other wing forward, notional anyway, Mikey Conway into Ronan Sweeney. Great block, excellent work by Mick McLaughlin again. Darrow Hannig handpiece passes it out, and Wicklow doing all the fundamental things well. Tony Hannon, good block by Kildare this time. That's good play by Ronan Sweeney. Dermot Early trying to set them up for a score, taking the return here from. Anthony Rainbow trying to go by Paddy Dalton. Dalton reaching in, committing the foul. Dermot Early happy to have uh, drawn a foul here in this particular instance. This was the block by Mick McLaughlin a little while ago. Yeah, fine block that time by McLaughlin. And again, uh, Dermot Early putting all his experience to work there and the way he engineered that free for himself. But it must be said, up to that point, most of the Kildare attacks lacked purpose and direction, whereas there's a huge spirit in the Wicklow team since half-time. Playing the ball well, OK, I know that Hannon will be disappointed that he kind of turned over possession there, but there's only been one team in it up to now in the second half. Well, Mikey Conway is an excellent kicker of freeze with the left boot. So I've got a couple of late points against Donegal in the league, the only match in which they, they won. This one is wide, and that is one they needed to get going for the second half because they've had a miserable opening nine minutes. Yeah, they needed that one, and that can have a real corrosive effect on the confidence of the team, not alone on young Conway himself. But uh, they need leadership at the moment, they need somebody to get the uh, game by the scruff of the neck out there, because in terms of territory, in terms of possession, there's only one team in it. Mark Scanlon is one of two substitutes that are going to be brought on. Podrick O'Neill is coming on as well, he was originally in the list given to us starting out today. But here he is to come in to play his eighth championship match. Now, he's played very little football in the last 12 months. Played in a challenge match last weekend, came through that. And Mark Scanlon, I think I saw coming on as well. So, well, will the changes now make a difference? That's a great catch by James Stafford, confidently taking the return. 
kicking it outside to Paul Earle, who gets away off the corner back, drifts into space, again looks up to see where Furlong is, couldn't hold it this time, held on to by Gary White, the wing back instead. Kevin O'Neill now, who hasn't had things his own way. Rainbow taking this from the free kick, trying to build a decent counter attack. Johnny Doyle, he's one player who can keep this team ticking along nicely. Towards Criven, but it runs away from him, puts pressure on Paddy Dalton, but not sufficient pressure. And the wing back looks very assured and confident. Well, there's an injury to one of the uh, Kildare players at the moment, it's Damien Power. So technically, they are down right now to 14 players as Eamon Callaghan, an early substitute for Kildare, gets it as far as Podrick O'Neill, beautifully inside here to Alan Smith, chance of a score, and it shaves the crossbar, goes over, it might even have gone under, lovely score, lovely point, first of the second half for Kildare, 9-6, he's a constant danger. Yeah, wonderful crossfield ball that time, and again, Alan Smith got on to it again, fabulous shot, a little bit unlucky, it didn't dip, but it must be said, at that moment in time, Damien Power, the Wicklow uh, fullback, was out of the game, and maybe that cr what's created the space in there. Kieran Walsh came on earlier in the game for uh, Wicklow as a blood sub, now he's going to come on in a moment as a full substitute. Will that point re-energise Kildare now, refocus their direction? Smith breaks it, but only as far as the recovered Damien Power, who's drawn to the ground, however. And Johnny Doyle was the one who was the guilty party. Referee now wants to wait for the changes to be made. And Kieran Walsh is coming in as a replacement for Dean Odlam. Odlam, who was yellow-carded earlier on, now replaced by Kieran Walsh. And Walsh is from the Bolting Glass Club, and he's a very, very good forward. So an interesting forward pairing now, Walsh and Furlong up front. Let's see what they can produce. Need to get the ball first. Jacko Dalton trying to win it. He's won a free. This to be taken by Mick McLaughlin. Some 13 minutes into the second half. A three-point game. Walsh, kicked beautifully across here, taken delightfully by Leighton Glynn, doing well against Gary O'Neill, who was injured a little while back, challenged now by Killian Brennan, fed back by Stafford, comes again here as far as Kieran Walsh, another good block, Stafford feeding it forward, this time it's won by Dermot Early, went down low to take it, took the responsibility, out via Rainbow as far as Kevin O'Neill, and then swung away from further difficulty, out here as far as Mark Scanlon, Dropped there by Keith Cribben. Good cornerback play by Kieran Highland. He was being dragged back unfairly. Here's Paddy Dalton. These were the uh, substitutions made just a moment ago. Porrig O'Neill and Mark Scanlon, the players who came on. Ronan Sweeney and Andrew McLaughlin, the players who made way. Nine points to six, Wicklow leading. They've never won a championship match at Croke Park, ever. Amazing. Will this be the day? They have a chance, but Kildare have a lot of quality still. And they haven't shown as much of it as they might so far. Killian Brennan. Johnny Doyle. Swinging away to the right is Alan Smith, one of the young talented players from their under-21 team this year, taking on Alan Byrne, losing him, stopped by the goalkeeper, kicked away at a danger in the end, an important clearance by Darrell Hannig, out as far as Tony Hannan, and Alan Smith had a really good chance that time, was trying to do almost too much with it, was trying to walk it into the goal, you felt. Counter-attacking on Wicklow, Leighton Glynn into space as far as Shawnee Furlong, losing his full-back this time, he's given him a torrid time, that's a beauty! Shawnee Furlong with a second in the second half and a third in all, 10-6 the scoreline, Wicklow the leaders.
50 minutes gone. That's a fabulous score altogether. Wonderful teamwork all down the length of the field. But again, Furlong on the end of the move won the 50 50 ball with Kevin O'Neill and again fired a great score. That's a really match winning score if they can keep it going. And earlier on, Martin, this is what happened. And the goalkeeper made a really good save, Mervyn Travers. Well, some more changes. And Tyg Fennin is the player I think is coming on. Yes, it is number 25 and Keith Criven, the player who comes off. Well, yes. that's a real ace to be able to play at this stage if Tyg Fennin can get possession. He's done it so many times in the past for Kildare, he's never let them down. That time, Kieran Walsh putting a lot of pressure on the defender. Not making it easy at all for Eamon Callaghan. No, but what's noticeable about Wicklow, they're upping the pace of the game, they're keeping the tempo up, they're spreading the ball wide, at no time are they getting, uh, allowing Kildare to rest or to kind of think so, uh, too much. It's just, you know, very, very high intensity. Here's Walsh. They're showing us that they've more than two or three gears. And they've got a free in. It's an awkward enough angle to score from, but it gives them a chance. That time, Kieran Walsh, the player who was fouled, a Wicklow player down on the 20 metre line requiring the attention. But it's been a very good opening 16 and a half minutes to the second half for them. They've limited Kildare to one point as Shawnee Furlong picks himself off the ground. Yeah, he's been wonderful, but there's nobody on the Kildare team giving the inspiration. I noticed Dermot early at the moment, out around the middle of the field, trying to cajole, trying to encourage the players around him to up their game a little bit, but they're devoid of inspiration so far today. They're not able to say with the pace that, that Wicklow are setting. They, they, they just look like a team, Martin, that are expecting to win this, as if they've read the papers and the papers said you're going to win this game. That is correct, and again, there's a point, and I wonder is about it, that. Or is it not? Well, it's a flag. Was it over? Yeah, Certainly the Kildare fans didn't think so, but that's a beautiful point. Here it is again, kicked by Shawnee Furlong, putting it over, very, very tight indeed. Very tight, it just... It counts. Well, it certainly has gone up, the white flag has gone up and it counts, and that puts them five points ahead. Will Kildare somehow come back in the remaining 18 minutes or thereabouts? Quarter of the game still to be played, but it's still Wicklow who are winning all these important tussles in the centre of the park. That's it in a nutshell. That's why it's been won because those there was one Wicklow man there, three Kildare man, and it was the number seven, Paddy Dalton, that put his neck on the line and won it. Well, Paddy Dalton's one of those players. He's been playing for a fair old while. He plays with a lovely attacking verve, but he really would love to be on a team that wins a Leinster Championship match. Only a match, not to mention get to the semi-final or final. The reward for the winners here, a game against Leash in the quarter-final. Johnny Doyle wants to try and get inside the cover this time of Damien Power. Damien saying he was using his shoulder, John Bannon, who's handled this game as expertly as ever, not buying that one. You know, the greatest problem with teams who are uh, first division teams playing fourth division teams is complacency. And I just have a feeling, as you said, that the red script, they thought it was a case of turning up. They didn't realise they were going to meet a team that's absolutely playing it out of their skins. Johnny Doyle to hit this free from 20 metres. And that is inch perfect. Super kick. Second pointed free by Johnny Doyle. And it's now a four point game. Wicklow 11, Kildare 7, and these Wicklow fans are probably saying, if we could only get a goal. Yeah, it, yes, and again, Wicklow will be saying, if we can just keep pushing on, don't go into our shell, keep positive about things. The biggest, biggest problem they could have now if they become defensive about this is to try and sit on their laurels. They must keep that pace going. It's a fascinating match. It really is, by two of the lesser lights, even though Kildare may not like us saying that, considering they have played in All-Ireland Finals in the last 10 years, but in recent times they haven't achieved a great deal. This is one of their big days in the Championship at the early stages. Leighton Glynn. Beautifully in again towards Furlong, quite a target. Comes out here as far as Gary White. Oh, Gary, that time Gary White led with his left hand. He's got to be careful because he's on a yellow. 
I don't think he intended to. His hand came up, but the referee... He'll be lucky if he gets a black card after the yellow he got earlier on. But the referee is giving him the red. Getting a straight red. And that's a straight red. Yeah. And it goes from bad to worse for Kildare. They've lost the captain of their under-21 team for this year, Gary White, in the 56th minute. Yeah, I feel sorry for him in one way. Again, he's put under huge pressure that time by the by the Wicklow defenders or by the Wicklow attack. In fact, it was Furlong who was putting the pressure on him ultimately there. But again, he just slapped out with his hand. Yeah, the hand it... did come up, Martin. Yeah, I, I thought it came up involuntarily. It did come up, no doubt about it. Well, well, he was attempting a handoff. I don't think he meant anything malicious in that. But again, it was going to kind of incur a second yellow at worst. And again, that would have also resulted in the sending off. But that's a huge blow to Kildare. And it gives Wicklow another free kick. And Tony Hannon, who has got four points from six frees taken so far, will be the shooter. Shawnee Furlong is going to go off for attention because I think there's some blood on that nose, so a blood substitute will be required. He's had a great match. Wonderful game. But again, it's a question now, can Wicklow hold their nerve? I mean, we've often seen teams down to 14 men bringing, uh, you know, really, really up in the ante. And teams who have the numerical advantage finding difficulty to know what the responsibilities are. But this is a great opportunity for Wicklow. And that is kicked over the bar. Another for Tony Hannan. Six points in all for Tony Hannan. And I think it's Kieran Daly who's just come on. Yes, it's Derek Daly rather who's come on. Derek who scored a goal in the Tommy Murphy Cup final last year. He's come on as a blood substitute for Shawnee Furlong. And as Shawnee was going off, I could see Mick O'Dwyer talking to him, encouraging him probably to get back into the fray as quickly as possible. And knowing Mick has probably said, you play with your hands and your feet, not your nose. Back in as quick as you can. That's a free to, Wick, to uh, Kildare. Referee having words now with J.P. Furlong, or J.P. Dalton. Got Furlong on the mind. J.P. Dalton is uh, about to get a yellow card, it would appear. Yeah, if they stay positive, if they keep playing the ball, make use of their numerical advantage, it's certainly there for them to win. So two yellow cards then dished out to Wicklow players. Now John Doyle, team behind by five points. Wanted to cut into that lead, but he fails to do so. And that a tribute, in a way, to the enormous pressure that was put on John Doyle that time. There was, they were in his face, they were down, ready to try and block. It was never an easy kick. Yeah, that's true. Again, the teamwork of Wicklow's has been vastly superior to that of Kildare's. Wicklow would deserve to win this match on what we've seen so far. But we're only after playing 58 minutes. And there are 12 to go. They lead by five. They'll never have a better chance of beating another Leinster team in a championship match at Grove Park. But this is Kildare, and they are masters of winning games late. Johnny Doyle back in once again. Still they keep it alive. Under pressure here as far as Daryl Flynn. Kicked in the end by Padraig O'Neill. It drops short. Good call by Mervyn Travers that time. Oh, out over the sideline and Mick McLaughlin says give us a chance no hope in the world of getting that Kildare have it back the elegant Dermot Early kicked across here towards Alan Smith trying to steal a march against Alan Burney went in along the baseline once already cuts back out this time back towards Killian Brennan the team captain still going through three players after him back towards Johnny Doyle oh it's hopeless and he knows it and he looks up to the skies immediately yeah, that's a very disappointing finish by Johnny Doyle. He's normally so reliable. Again, Young Smith in the corner won the ball well. But again, just a couple of little mistakes there by Damien Parr, J.P. McLaughlin, or J.P. Dalton, rather, in the centre-half back, uh, Darrell O'Hanney. Uh, you know, a little kind of doubts maybe creeping into Wicklow, but they shouldn't have any. They're vastly, uh, they're by far the, uh, the superior team. And look who's back. It's Shawnee Furlong. Being marked there by Morgan O'Flaherty. But he's giving anybody who marks him this afternoon a wretched time. Kicked out here and held by Mick McLaughlin. Pressure now being exerted by the...
tackle there, half forwards. Should have been doing that half an hour ago. This is Eamon Callaghan. First half substitute. Mark Scanlon now, making a lot of headway. Kicking for 45 metres out. Smith trying to reach it, but it was somewhat of a, something of a hopeless ball, really. There were three backs against him. No real support coming in, even, even if he had managed to knock it down. But Kildare have a line ball, which Mikey Conway will take. Yeah, Wicklow are there in numbers all the time, because they are playing very much as individuals. They're just an absence of real teamwork and real leadership out there in the field at the moment. Killian Brennan. Oh, that just underlines what a hopeless day it's been so far for them. Only seven points scored in 61 minutes. Yeah, this is a massive letdown for Kildare. They came into this game with a lot of hope, a lot of expectancy. Again, you know, the back, on the back of a very good under-21 campaign. OK, a good, solid display against Kerry in the, in the second last game of the National League. But they have fallen badly flat today. Unless something really dramatic happens over the last nine or ten minutes, they're going to suffer a defeat here. Only two points in the second half for Kildare, and one of those coming from play. And it's Wicklow again. Broken down here to Leighton Glynn. Mark Scanlon trying to get goal side of him. Glynn again, just holding, composed, precise, nicely in as far as Kieran Walsh, attracting Kildare players to him, and in the end the ball was handled on the ground. Well, what were people saying on the panel before the game that there were matches today that were highly predictable, that the outcome was practically known beforehand? It's championship, you never can tell. Well, it's championship, but in fairness to the lads, we're talking about there could be a, uh, uh, you know, okay, maybe, you know, some, uh, there could be a, a, a surprise in this one. Okay, it was likely that Kildare would win it. But again, a local derby between Wicklow and Kildare, the fact that Wicklow have made, for example, took loud last year the three games in the first round of the championship. So they have been showing an improvement in form in championship in the last year or so. Well, Daryl Flynn, so off, Boric Malarkey is on. More or less a last throw of the dice. That's towards Tyke Fennan. Out to the edges, however. Needs to work it inside. Good ball to Morgan O'Flaherty, the corner back way up there. Back towards Tyke Fennan again, wriggling his way, looking for latitude. No latitude there. James Stafford instead. And a relieving kick way out as far as Leighton Glenn. Quick look up, doesn't need to kick it, can hold, can wait. Tormenting rainbow. Still Glenn, great play. This is excellent. Finally going for a shot himself. Well, had he made it, it would have been the score of the day. Yeah, it's lit- the eighth wide instead. Yeah, we have more vision that time. Paul Earls had really made a fantastic run off the ball to get on the end of a move had Glynn seen him. But again, that typifies the difference between the two teams in one respect that Wicklow are working very hard for one another. Kildare are playing more and more as individuals. And just at the moment, you know, again repeating myself, I think there's only one result possible, and that's a Wicklow win. I wonder what Mick O'Dwyer is feeling right now. Mighty proud, I would imagine. Tony Hannon. Has a support player, it's Kieran Walsh, fisting it wisely over the bar. Good play by the substitute. Surely now they have to win. They're ahead by six points with only six minutes to go. 13 points to seven. This was a great attack and that was a fine finish by a talented young player. Yeah, Kieran watched that time, held his nerve well, did the sensible thing, putting the ball over the bar. They'd like to get one more stud this week to put seven points between them, but at the moment they're very much in control. Well, for a man who has won all those All-Irelands with Kerry, who has taken Leash to win a Leinster, who's taken Kildare to win two Leinsters and get to an All-Ireland final, he would love to win a championship match with his new team. Under pressure now, however, from Tyg Fennan, that's a free in from the 13-metre line and a chance to get one back and unnerve Wicklow in the concluding stages of this tie. Tyke Fennan's in a hurry. He certainly should be, and again, Wicklow will be saying to themselves, let's not concede a goal, lads, and we have this, because it's hard to see uh, uh, Kildare going and scoring six points in the last uh, uh, five or six minutes. Fennan chips it over brilliantly, no problem there whatsoever, and now they must be thinking about a goal, surely. Five minutes to go. Wicklow 13, Kildare 8. Wicklow, who got the first point of the match, a free from Tony Hannon. 
and they've done well for most of this, led by 5-2 at one stage, drawn level at half-time, five apiece, started brilliantly in the second half, and they've gone on to the, enjoy this comfortable five-point advantage. But they can they now finish out the deal? It's back with Rainbow. Nicely ahead here for Johnny Doyle. Two players after him, Darrow Haddock, JP Dalton, unable to get near him. Lovely release inside for O'Neill, Podrick O'Neill, played back out towards Fennan to try and squeeze it between the posts. He's put it wide. It was a chance, it was a difficult one, and he couldn't quite make it that time. It still is a five-point game. Yeah, you can see Porrick O'Neill's uh, lack of match fitness a factor at that time. He might have gone on and taken the score himself. But again, Fennin had a difficult opportunity and put it wide. But it must be said, too, that the midfield dominance of Thomas Walsh and James Stafford, who both have been consistent and outstanding, has really set the, uh, set the platform for this outstanding Wicklow performance. We can't say a Wicklow victory just yet, because that would be premature. Darrow Haddock. Under pressure, kicking that one. Scanlon's under it for Kildare. It's won there by Eamon Callaghan. Now Killian Brennan. Anthony Rainbow. Such a good player over the years. Porig O'Neill now. Booting it in. It's a hit and hope one. But there are three players against two defenders. It came off the boot of JP Dalton. And Jacko concedes a 45. And that's a second of the match. Yeah, it appears to me at the moment that Wicklow are just wishing for the final whistle. They have stopped really playing. They're allowing Kildare to come, you know, to come on against them. And they really just need to get a grip again, get their middle lads starting to kind of get on possession again. But they're just, you know, falling back too much into a defensive mode should try and push on in the next couple of minutes. Just wonder, have they frozen this afternoon? Mikey Conway to take this. Well, it has to be in and around the house. Nicely chipped in, Dermot Early going for it, Early has it. Surrounded by Wicklow players, one of them gets it away. That was Kieran Walsh, comes back out once again into the mix. And that final effort is a disappointing one there by Porig Malarkey. Never hit it properly, very tentative, very unsure of himself. And the manager looks very rueful. And he's every right to be again. Malarkey that time had the opportunity to tap it over the bar, or at least try and work it in. It's a goal they needed at this stage, actually, to try and pull this game out of the fire. But again, this absence of direction and purpose, really, that we have seen right throughout the game, hasn't really, they haven't rid themselves of that today. It's a Kildare team that won just one match in Division 1, that will be playing in Division 2 next season. Short on confidence. And they're looking very poorly here with under two minutes of normal time to go. Maybe they'll be rescued yet. Dermot Early inside. Fennin's after it. It's well read, however, by the man in the corner. Alan Byrne comes across smartly to Darrow Hannig. Nice release outside to Mick McLaughlin. Holding on for dear life. Challenged by Podrick O'Neill. And it's a free out. For Wicklow, this is as good as an All Ireland final. Very much one. They're much more the composed team. Again, if they just can keep the keep possession, keep using the extra man, you know, using certainly in particular the likes of Thomas Walsh and Stafford to give that little bit of direction over the last couple of minutes to have this game won. You remember the three games against Louth last year? They had but three goal chances in the first half. Didn't take any of them, and then were caught at the end. Thomas Walsh breaks it, this time for Stafford. Walsh has gone forward to join the attack. It's Kieran Walsh is coming across here, jumping with Eamon Callaghan. Callaghan takes it in, in the final minute of the 70. There'll be added time, no doubt about that, maybe two to three minutes. That's a wayward kick to Paddy Dalton, holds on to it well. Possession, look at the way Leighton Glenn holds on to every ball, doesn't waste a pass, doesn't overuse it, doesn't use it too, too hurriedly. He's such a master. He's played very well today. In fact, that central unit of Glynn and Furlong in the Wicklow team have been consistently good throughout the game, even though early on maybe Kevin O'Neill, I thought, had uh, you know, got the better of its tussle with Furlong. But Glynn and, uh, and, Furlong, ha or Glynn and Furlong have grown into the game as it's gone on. There's a yellow card, but more importantly, there's got to be two minutes of stoppage time played, and we're into that now. 
Kildare looking to try and somehow claw it back. Looks a forlorn hope, but you never know in sport. Killian Brennan trying to bury one. Johnny Doyle trying to hold it. They work it to Mikey Conway, maybe on the left boot. Outside here is Alan Smith, two points in the game so far. And this time he manages to judge the breeze well and puts it over. But he doesn't look too happy with himself. I think he was hoping for something else, maybe to place it in for a colleague and go for a goal. Yeah, but for a young lad who's just, you know, out, out of an under-21 yeah, campaign, he's done very well. He can be quite proud of his uh, involvement today. Get a good score, but it's a goal they need. Well, he's a name for the future, that's for certain. Alan Smith, three points this afternoon. 13 points to nine, however. His team are down, and we're into the final minute. Dermot Early again. Johnny Doyle now. Got just two points in the match. They came from freeze. Anthony Rainbow. Well, they're looking for a goal from somewhere. And then a lot of divine intervention. Porrick O'Neill. He's drawn the fullback. Damien Power way out into the edges. Tag Fennin out of the periphery as well. Bottled up over there by Kieran Highland. Highland's a very gritty cornerback. That's over the end line. That's going to be a kick out. This is going to be Wicklow's day. And the referee saying to them, bring the ball back. What a performance by Mick O'Dwyer's men, and let's credit Kevin O'Brien as well, who was one of the greats of Wicklow football down the years. Didn't enjoy all the success that he might have for a player of such talent. But it's Mikko's day. There's no stopping the maestro. They're on their way just to the quarterfinals. Look at the intensity on his face. He's waiting for the whistle. There it is. Wicklow beat Kildare. Win at Croke Park in the championship for the first time ever. It's no more than they are due. They said it would be his last hurrah. Forget about that. There's more life in Mick O'Dwyer. 72 years young next month. He's the man of the moment, and they're the team of the day. And Thomas Walsh and James Stafford did really well in midfield. They were by far the better team, the more skillful team, the more committed team, the fitter team. I played the much better football right throughout the game. Two outstanding cornerbacks in Kieran Highland and Alan Byrne. Half back line solid throughout. Midfield wonderful platform, but every one of the forwards chipped him at different times. And I thought in particular Shawnee Furlong at full forward gave him a man of the match performance. Well, we've been hearing all week that the championship doesn't get going until July or August or whatever. The championship got going going in May. It's little stories like that, big stories like this. These are the ones that matter to the teams involved in this year's championship. Wicklow delighted, celebrating, really, really happy with themselves. But what can you say about Kildare? They didn't perform. It was a major disappointment. And they now go to the qualifiers and they will have that long kind of wait that Longford will have. Today, it's all about Wicklow. This is Mikko de Wire in his enthusiasm, falling to the ground. He's back on his feet quickly because he's one of the greats. And the full-time score here, for the record, shows that Wicklow have won. It's Wicklow, 13 points, Kildare, nine. Let's go down to Claire McNamara. Yes, thank you, Ger. Mick O'Dwyer, really with a little. long list of glittering achievements in football. How do you feel today with Wicklow's first senior championship win here at Crow Park? Well, I suppose this is the first victory that Wicklow have had here in 120 years of football. So I certainly would have to be happy. I'm exceptionally happy today. And the one thing about these guys that we have, they're marvellous footballers. They put in a lot of work and I think they deserve the win today. They didn't look like Division 4 footballers. Great spirit, great work rate. Well, a championship in league are two different games altogether. We prepared this team from way back in October for one date, and that was the 18th of May. And today they came out and they played exceptionally well and played good attractive football as well. So it was great, and it's great for Wicklow. People were talking that this may be your last championship game. You've got another game coming up now against Leash. Are you going to continue to stir things up? I think they'll have to wait quite a long while from, for my retirement, I can assure you that. <laughs> <laughs>